you know, one of the most powerful tools of the human spirit is attention, or using your attention. And you can either augment your attention with things like mindfulness-based practices or mind-body medicine, or you can diffuse it with things like your phone, TV, and all, all the other distractions in, in the world, or, or things like, you can alter it with pharmaceuticals and you know, drugs and those sort of things. Um, but you know, how we use, our, use your attention and how we focus is really important to your well-being. And I'm sure you know, if you've attended any talk on mindfulness or well-being and those sort of things, one of the things that you always say is focus in the moment. Right? And that's what we tend to have a really hard time doing with so many things you know, affecting our life on a daily basis is you know, just even preparing for this interview I, you know, yesterday. You know, I was really enjoying you know, going through and you know, reviewing some of the literature and the knowledge behind mindfulness. But then I started thinking about the lecture I got to prepare for, to, you know, the exams I got to mark. And all of a sudden that focused attention, that time I was enjoying what I was doing is totally gone. And I had to bring myself back. Um, and so when you meditate, and this is what I'm trying to get at, what you're doing is you're trying to focus on a focal point, breathing, to bring yourself back to a focus point. And so another great example from the, that book, uh, Dr. Siegel's book, is he talks about the wheel of awareness. You gotta imagine this is sort of the central hub of the wheel, and then you have all these spokes coming off the wheel. So the hub you can think of is whatever your focal point is gonna be. Normally speaking, when you start a meditative practice, it's your breathing. It's the easiest thing to sort of focus on. Now all the spokes are all the other things going on in your life, okay? Work, school, family stress, whatever it is you wanna put on the spokes that relates to your life. Point is, when you start meditating, you're gonna have what we call monkey mind. Your mind is gonna bounce all over the place. If you think you're gonna be an expert meditator in, in you know, one day, you're wrong. <laughs> Uh, but that's part of the that's part of establishing the practice um, and the point is is every time you're gonna go to a spoke you acknowledge that spoke and what's happening but you come back to your breathing and you focus back on your breathing and that's the point so when you do run into a life situation where something stresses you out you can bring yourself back to focus you're not gonna sit there on that spoke for ages and ages and start stressing about it which is gonna cause eventually a chronic stress problem and so it's always bringing yourself back to focus. And that's the point of practicing mindfulness or mind-body uh, practices or meditation is to develop that focal point and develop that focused attention. Deal with it. It's how you set yourself up to deal with it. And, and your brain is like, is a, just as an important muscle. So why do you, you know, for instance, why do you take up a jogging routine? Why do you take up a workout routine or any other exercise routine? It's because you want to prepare your body for you know, whatever's coming next. As you age, you grow older, you don't, you, you, you know, if you have a family, you want to be able to run around with your kids or whatever it may be, you want your body to be prepared. So your brain is just as important muscle. Why wouldn't you want that to be prepared? You have just as many physical stressors now as you do mental stressors, right? Or even more pro probably. So why would you not want to work out that muscle? And meditation and mindfulness is exactly what that is. It's working out this so you're more prepared to deal with that. Um, and so there's a, a a device called heart math and I've used it in my class actually what it is it's a device that sort of just feels for your your heart rate or measures your heart rate but not just your heart rate it measures specifically your heart rate variability okay so what I mean by heart rate variability you, certainly everyone has a heart rate if you're alive and breathing right and what you don't want is your heart rate to be something static like you know typical heart rate anywhere can be about you know 55 to 65 BPM right beats per minute and so what you don't want is to see with an individual that your heart rate's at 58 all the time. What you want to look for actually in, a, in a, what we would call a less stressed individual is a heart rate that's sort of changing over time. It's at 58, now it's at 59, now it's at 60, and then it goes back to 55. There's variability in what's happening in your heart rate, okay? And the way, the best way to sort of do this is an analogy, I'm gonna stand up because I think that's the best way to sort of do it. Um, and the analogy I use in my class is, think of it as a tennis player. And so a tennis player getting ready for a serve, right? And so if a tennis player is getting ready to serve, you kind of have to stand like this. And what you're doing is you're going, you're leaning back and forth like this, left, sort of right. Imagine that being your heart rate variability, right? It's sort of jumpy, a little bit variable. That's why you're doing this. The reason you're doing that is because you're waiting for this serve to come from the other side. Think of the serve as being an incoming stress, right? If you're standing like this in a very static position, you're not gonna be ready to react to go left or right for depending where that serve goes. But if you're doing this, you're much more prepared to receive that serve or the incoming stress. So it's a really good analogy of saying you're much more prepared to deal with a stress response by having this heart rate variability. 
And so that's where heart math is. It measures your heart rate variability to see, you know, when you, when you start to breathe and focus and think of that happy thought, heart rate variability goes up. And you have a much more activation of the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic system. And so as a really neat readout or biofeedback that shows you as you start to breathe and you start to think of something positive, you can see the coherence go up. You can see that heart rate variability change. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Um, and that's another way sort of your breathing connects uh, to your body and how it can induce well-being.